defended the e pawn and stopped knight to g5. H6 really, really stops knight to g5 and stops h6. And so you might think, well, okay, black's got everything covered now. And now he's ready to play queen away five check and all will be well. Well, first of all, white can just castle, which is what he did. Actually, that was, I think, a novelty, though it ended up transposing to a, to a game. Rook to h4 was played in another very high-level game. Ivan Sheparinov, the strong, I was going to say Bulgarian grandmaster, but he changed federations. I forget which country he switched to. Anyway, Sheparinov played this last year against a player named Nozdrashev, who I haven't heard of, but is like either a high-rated IM or a low-rated GM. Rook h4 keeps an edge for white, but only an edge. So black played knight to g5, and after takes, f takes, wasn't so bad. Black was okay, and even managed to, to defeat his much higher rated opponent. So just because, you know, what we're going to see, it doesn't mean that this is just so easy and that Wang Hao is, uh, you know, a weak player or anything like that. Not by any, any stretch of the imagination. So h6 is a mistake, and it's a little bit surprisingly, as, as natural as rook h4, or you might say a similar rook to h3 appears, Ding played the right move, and it was to castle. So he doesn't even worry about getting this h1, now f1 rook, into the game, but just takes care of his king's position. And kind of startling, but black's position, again, is, is just in, in, in dire straits. The thing is, the rook to h4 idea ends up misplacing the rook. So the problem that black has on the king side has to do with these light squared weaknesses. And the rook is, you know, it's it's not a diagonal piece. You know, it's a vertical and horizontal piece. So it's not able to just switch around to all of these, these light squares, especially after black has played knight to g5. The knight, by contrast, well, it's not a diagonal piece either, but it can get wherever it wants to go. So it can get to g6, it can get to f5. The h pawn is making sure that the g6 pawn stays under control. And... White just takes care of his king, solves that problem, and black is going to be helpless. Ironically, though, there's another game that got to this position. This is the one where white played h5 earlier. I remember my mentioning that. And, well, this game too, as I said, black won, but not because of this position. All right, so in our main game, Wang Hao played queen to c8. In the game, uh, Alexander Fear against Darcy Lima, black played rook to f8. And now, though, Fear went in the wrong direction. He went knight to h2 to play knight g4 and f4. He should just play knight to h4. So just park all of these guys on light squares, bring the queen to g6 or g4, play knight f5. We're going to see something like this in the game. And black just collapses rapidly. So don't be misled by black's results in the database. He's already losing here. So, in the game, Wang Hao played queen to c8, and now, simple chess, queen to g6, threatening to win on the spot with knight f6. So, black goes knight to d7, and now, just bring in the reserves, knight h4, and then knight to f5 is just going to be a murderous threat, threatening check on e7, threatening knight takes h6. What do you do? He goes knight e to f8, yeah, wrong knight, knight e to f8. Yeah, of course, my suggestion was rather silly because there's knight f6 check here. And that should do the job. Actually, this is a nice little puzzle. So white's move and win here. So my my accident is to your to your benefit. White to move. What should he do? All right, I hope you all spotted this. This is very attractive. Queen to h7 check, knight h7, and knight to g6 mate. So that's what would have happened in that case. So nice, nice little variation. All right. So instead, as I said, it was knight e to f8. Okay, now queen to g4, king h8, knight f5. And now the knight goes to e6 to defend against the mate threat on g7. All right. So this one's a little bit more subtle. How did ding finish the game from here. So the game ends in, in two moves. Or sorry, the game finishes in three moves, not two moves. How do we do it? So here is the answer. We start with 
knight d to e7. Queen goes to c7. Knight g6 check. And here, whatever black does, it's going to fall prey to a similar tactic in either case. So if the king goes to g8, what does white do? So this lineup should make you very suspicious. This, this should be a very big clue. So we go, knight takes. If he doesn't take, well, white's going to move the knight, play h6, and the breakthrough is imminent. So g takes, but then either rook takes d7 first, or simply knight takes e5, and then capturing on d7 is utter destruction. So black, instead of playing king to g8, went king to h7. And now, what's the final move of the game? So this is nice. So we go, knight takes g7. And that was it. Black resigned. If he doesn't take the knight, well, he's losing all kinds of things. The rook is under attack. This knight is under attack two different ways. There's also potentially it's a capture on d7, depending on if black, let's say, moves the knight from e6. So not taking the knight is not going to help. But taking the knight's not going to help either. So if king takes e5, followed by taking on d7, or even better, just rook p7 straight away, and then knight e5 with discovered check, and then we take the queen. So that's that's hopeless. And if you take with the knight, well, you're just hanging this knight. And further problem is the king is dying. So knight f8 and queen g7 is me. So there you go. Complete disaster for Wang Hao. And the, the horrible thing for, for him is that Ding really didn't have to find anything if he had done his homework. So he just basically could make more or less automatic moves. He probably, or at least quite possibly, had you know looked at the position after 23 castles and spent some time analyzing what Fear should have done. And you know it's it's possible that virtually the entire game was already on Ding's computer before. Okay, that said, you know if Wang Hao can lose like this, so can our opponents. So if you play this line with White, this game offers some some grounds for hope that you can you can win some some nice games with it. And as black, well, the the one thing that's a mystery to me is I really don't know what Ding had prepared had black played queen away five check on move 21 instead of f6. So let me go back to that that position. Yeah, this is really the critical moment. After queen away five check, I mean I, I spent a lot of time trying to analyze this and, and found nothing. So this is really where, where the action is in this particular sub-variation. So if you're playing black, you got to play this. If you're playing white, do your best to find something here. And if you can't, then, again, I would recommend taking a look at some of the options like rook to h or g4 here. And then I mentioned um, a couple moves before that, castle and king side instead of playing h4. So it's a very, very important line in contemporary chess. It's, it's pretty trendy and very, very sharp. So it's, it's entertaining. It will reward your preparation and your tactical skill. So whichever side of this you, you play, I think you'll enjoy it. Have fun, work hard, and I will see you next time. So until then, this is Fide Master Dennis Montecrucis signing off for ChessLecture.com. Bye-bye.